So if you crack open your Dropbox, guys, um, your ALD boot um, course supplements folder and click on today, Thursday. Congratulations, you made it Thursday. There's a bunch of examples of focus chart sheets in here. But first, why don't you click on um, the Sweeney Todd Broadway focus charts. And um, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, Ken, but I think it was like mid 80s. I'm, I'm going to say 1985, six or something like that is when Sweeney Todd opened on Broadway. And uh, we have those focus charts here from Ken. A lot of it's all hand drawn. And this, of course, um, you know, there's no channel numbers, as you can see. But the thing I wanted to talk about is actually the cover page um, and why a cover page is important. So um, actually, a full drawing package for Sweeney Todd is in the um, Dropbox and all those in, in your show archive. So have a look at that if you haven't. It's really, really cool to see. But um, but the whole reason why there's this focus chart page is, is actually now me as, as Ken hired me tomorrow as an assistant to go and recreate Sweeney Todd exactly as it was on Broadway um, 30 years ago. I can go do that now because this focus chart has a cover sheet that says uh, it, it um, describes all the abbreviations that are used in the document. You know, uh, proscenium is pros, portal is port border, border, it, like all those shorthands that people are going to use in focus charts because you have to, because you got to fit a lot of information on a sheet like that. Um, that is the whole point of a cover, cover page. And it even has um, a kind of a description of the grid and how it breaks down. Now, also, we'll, we'll go, we'll talk about that grid in a minute, but you've already kind of heard Ken talk about this. You've heard Ryan talk about it yesterday in Hamilton. But basically what happens is if you think about it like Battleship, everything gets broken down into a crosshair grid. So you've got the center line, which is a set of numbers. Here it's feet. So you can see that they've, Ken has drawn where the zero, zero is, where those two lines meet. That's the origin, it's called the origin. And also, you know, you heard Tim Reed talk about how important the origin is and all the frozen drawings that we looked at two days ago. Um, and who sets that? Sometimes it's the set designer, sometimes the lighting designer, but that origin is really important because that's kind of where the whole show lays out from. Uh, and often it's the zero, zero is um, the back of the proscenium or the fire curtain, or in the UK, we call it the plaster line. Uh, sorry, in America, you call it the plaster line. In the UK, we call it the back of the iron curtain. So that is the zero because, because from that point on is the grid. That's really important. And we'll talk about this more when we talk about how to relight a show and how you lay out a show. But the zero, zero is, is basically the, the, the bottom of the downstage point of the grid from where you can physically fly things. And, and whether or not there's a fly bar there or not, or there's an opera bridge or whatever, like from that point on, you have all that flexibility and where you can hang your show to an extent, obviously. Um, results may vary. <laughs> but um, again, that, that zero, zero depends. Like Ken said, sometimes it's the very front of the stage. Sometimes it's the back of the, the proscenium. Sometimes it's a, a very specific point on the set. Um, sometimes if it's a revolve, maybe some people have zero, zero be the middle of the revolve. Um, that's really up to the show and there's, there's no specific rules about that. But once you've got it set, all your paperwork resolves, revolves around that. So you need to notate that because if you don't have that written down, that's a very crucial piece of information that uh, no one will be able to figure out how to relight your show from if they don't know what all the footmarks and stuff in the focus charts are all about. So I thought it'd be fun to just look at this cover chart uh, from Sweeney Todd and uh, cover page for the charts for Sweeney Todd and um, that kind of kick off the discussion anyway because now you can go and relight Sweeney Todd. You could recreate it in a theater at home, big enough theater at home obviously because uh, you have the light plots and you have the focus charts if you would want to um, and you could find all that old kit. <laughs> Good luck. Um, so close those for now because we've, we've had that fun but now look at um, there's another pdf in that Dropbox called focus tapes. If you click that you'll see some roll, a picture of some rolled up focus charts, uh, focus tapes. And it's basically like uh, seat belt material. Um, if you're London based, you can get that really easily in the West End in Covent Garden uh, in Seven Dials actually at a place called Arthur Beale, I think it's called. It's a yachting shop. Totally worth walking in there anyway and just having a look around because they've got all sorts of fun yachting stuff and things and trinkets. But that's where I'll go to get focus tapes if I need them in the West End. It's a pound per meter. So it is inexpensive. Each show should buy their own um, because what you'll do is you'll buy these tapes. You'll make them, you'll get them all marked up. You'll decide how, you know, how it's going to get laid out. How are you going to grid the stage? 
And then the show will pay for that because then these focus tapes will stay with the show. It's like a consumable item that each show should buy. If it's touring, all the more reason that you need those focus tapes for the tour. But if it's a maintenance call or something in the West End, then they'll roll these tapes out and use them to, um, to check focuses on the lights. And, and this focus grid PDF that I've put in the Dropbox is an example of, uh, of how you grid the grid stage out. And they have put their cross tape, their cross stage tape exactly where I've, where I've told you most people do, and that's the back of the proscenium. And then you'll see that if you go further downstage from the proscenium towards the audience, the numbers actually go minus. And if you go upstage of the proscenium, the numbers are plus. Uh, if you go left or right, the numbers have an L or an R. So you really quick, you, you instantly now know where you are on stage. If I'm at two left minus four, I know I'm two feet left of center and I'm downstage at the back of the proscenium by two feet. Let's talk for a minute about using feet and meters, because um, a lot of you or most of you are from Europe who are listening in and uh, I'll give you my my take on this anyway. Um, so to start with, so feet is kind of what came over with all the big American musicals. Some people do it in meters. I think that's a little bit cruel. Um, and because <laughs> if you because you start having like zero, zero point five, one. 1.52. And listen, you aren't the only people that use these numbers. Um, you can set up your whole own grid and system, but there are other people on the production who are doing grids, right? Um, if you've ever walked to the front of the stage uh, on a Broadway or a West End musical and looked, looked down in the footlight trough or across the front of the stage, you'll see little numbers um, painted there. You'll never have seen them from the auditorium, but the dancers look at those numbers, the actors look at those numbers, and that's how they know where they are on stage. So, um, and they're called dance numbers. Um, it's really common in all musicals. Uh, go have a look if you've never seen it. Um, you'll always now see them. You'll never be able to un just unsee them. <laughs> but uh, they're always there and they're for the dancers so they can find out where they are on stage. Um, and if you go into a rehearsal room when they're setting the show and they're chore uh, choreographing the show, they'll have those same numbers written on the floor. Um, often when you get into tech, uh, I do this if no one else does it, but you'll put, you'll print out big numbers and you'll put them on the front of the stage so that when you're teching a show, everyone can see the same dance numbers that the actors can see. So it's a way of, you know, the director being able to say, yeah, go stand at uh, two, two right, because he can see exactly where two right is from the auditorium. And of course we take those numbers off for the dress rehearsal and the photographs and for the shows. Um, so it becomes this common language for everyone. And the only reason why I, I, so if you're working with a young choreographer um, or young stage management who are gonna set all this up in rehearsals, it's really good to have that conversation ahead of time. Are you gonna use dance numbers? How are you gonna use them? Where, you know, where is your zero gonna start? Um, by the way, dancers don't really think about the upstage downstage tape. That's just us in lighting, but they're, they always have some sort of numbering system across the front stage. Um, so why I would why I would argue for feet and not meters is because uh, the floorboards more often than not your show deck is in four by eight sheets of plywood, and if it if you use feet very often depending upon how your set designer or your production carpenter decides to build the floor, but often there's a seam at center. Or there's uh, or there's a, a seam along the line of the proscenium if they if they if they've done it really well um, and that that is so handy because that means now you have additional references as you walk upstage and downstage on where where that every four feet or every uh, eight feet so it's really handy it's handy for the dancers because you can also say uh, you know stand up four left and and this, the next seam upstage and you know they're at four left at plus four. Um, some shows make like American Idiot. We did the um, the director really wanted to use her own system. She wanted to do uh, she just wanted to put random numbers across the front of the stage, and of course that works for the dancers, but it also isn't helpful for anyone else in the show because there because it's not it's not an actual measurement of anything, so it's not helpful for us. So we still would have to lay out tapes. The carpenters still have to measure everything. So it's just really handy if, if you can negotiate a common language uh, early on. But certainly in America, it's pretty, very standard because uh, they all know feet is to use two, four, six, eight. Um, so, so if you look at any American musical, they'll always have a two, four, six, eight. In dance, uh, it's the same thing, but they, but they use like just center line quarter mark. Uh, and, and I think they break it into eights as well. Um, and you can see those ticks across the front of the stage. 
Um, so there's my spiel on, on how to lay out numbering uh, and the grid. But you have that, it's all established, it's all set up. So now let me show you uh, White Christmas. So in the focus charts folder, there's the White Christmas focus charts. This is from actually Sarah Brown, if you're still listening, I think we did this show together. This is uh, focus charts from White Christmas at the Dominion Theater. And you can see again, there's a table of contents and it shows you where each position is. Um, but let's just go to uh, page four and you can see that it's the circle, part of the circle front. And it has, uh, it has descriptions in there um, for each fixture, for each unit. Um, so you can see that unit number nine, uh, you can see that the purpose of that is a UV kick. This is something Ken has in almost all of his shows, like a really deep um, violet color coming in from the circle rail. He loves it because it fills in shadows and does stuff. Um, so that fixture, you can see right under the purpose, there's that bold thing because it's the most important thing. Where is that light focused? Well, it's focused at four left at zero. So that means if you go stand four left, uh, so, so your left to right is four, you're going four left and then zero, you're basically stood where the zero is on the show, which would have been the back of the proscenium. Um, you'll now know exactly where the hot spot of that light needs to be. You stand there and then there's additional notes. So the bottom of that light wants to land off the footlights. So I am now in page 52 of the PDF, which is 51 uh, in the document. And now this is the start of the one ladder left position, and it's a side light position. It's a ladder hanging in the downstage left bay. So this is all the kit that's in there, and you can see all their focuses. Again, so unit one is going far. You're standing uh, at the other opposite edge of the stage. You're going to 10 right at plus four. So that ladder is shooting straight across stage, which is at plus four. Um, and you can see the bottom note in all, in all those cuts is land at eight feet right. So the bottom of that scallop of the light wants to land at eight feet. And it's really important with side light to, to talk about it in terms of where it lands at. Because uh, if you've ever gone up to like the dress circle or the balcony and you've looked down at the stage and you can see they've done a terrible job focusing the show because none of the lights are, are, are hitting the deck in a symmetrical way, all the scallops and stuff you can see. So if you write down eight left, you now know that in each one of those ladders, as you go up stage, you wanna make sure that, 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 that each unit doing this same purpose in this system wants to land at eight right. Otherwise you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have a messy, messy show deck. But let's look at all the different fields here on this page, right? So we've talked about the 10 right at plus four. That's where you stand, that's where the hot spot is. That's the most important thing. Below that is a, is a field that's empty. Um, and you'll, you'll recognize all these fields from light right. Remember yesterday when we showed you where to put all this information into light right, I didn't talk much about it because I knew we'd be talking about it today. But if you, if you go down further, there is a needs column. That is like, what do you need to focus this light? Um, White Christmas is a great example of a show that has lots and lots of scenery. So often if the light is lighting a piece of scenery, you need that scenery. Or if you need to be able to do a cut off of a drop or something like that, you might need to know that. You might need to have that on stage or have that flown in. So there you write, this needs uh, the show drop or this needs the, the, tr the, the train wagon or something like that on stage. Um, so that you can, you know, you can get your focus right. Um, moving down, the next thing uh, in that unit is a, is a category called beam. Now this can be two different things depending on what kind of light it is. If it's a source for it or any other kind of like Leco or a profile light, it's it's talking about um, is the is the lens tube in or out? Um, and you can see the little plus. It's like a sliding scale basically. Um, and there, no one's put in information for this light here, but you can you can click on any one of those ticks in light right, and you can for anywhere from in so all the way out to the plus in the middle, which would be sharp. So that means that the, the focus of that light is sharp. So here you're talking about the focus of the beam. If it's a Fresnel, it's either spotted all the way in or it's spotted all the way out. Um, but it's but it but um, it gives you like a little sliding scale that you can mark there. Um, uh, where it, and record that focus. Um, below is uh, something to describe the axis. So if it's a par can, you describe which way you've set the bottle. Is it going upstage to downstage, left to right? Well, there's some diagonal lines that you can click on. And, and if you do click on it, then in, in this document, there'll be a big circle around the, the one that you've selected. So moving across and up, um, you can see the instrument type is the par, what kind of thing it is, um, and the channel number. <clears throat> Uh, 
and color and score that we've skipped. I'm sorry, but that's also there. And there's also a note field. So you can talk about anything specific that, that um, you don't have a field for here. Um, and then there's six different options or like ways to describe any sort of cuts or lands at or don't. So maybe say upstage, don't hit psych or things like that. It's a, it's a category to describe the boundaries of that thing that you're focusing, whether it's a parkan or something that's got shutters or a Fresnel that has barn doors. You basically have all the options you want to write to, to describe any of those edges that you want to describe. <clears throat> so there really is like all the information that you could possibly possibly want to put in but say you want to put in more or say it's like a fixture hitting scenery um, you can put in a picture so that empty square is a place where you could put in a picture on the needs column we've written show scrim so we need to have a show scrim flown in to do that and then you've had you have each fixture um, described in that photo in light right which we'll look at in a little bit later but in the focus um, in the focus chart section, you can you can actually doodle. You can you, John has been really clever and let you doodle on the image that you put in there. I've drawn little squares here to show you which bit of the logo the light is focused on, uh, and even made notes to help describe that. So there's everything you can do to um, to, to talk about um, conventional focus charts in Lightrite. And remember, what we keep saying is good lighting design is all about detail. And this is how you record that detail, because that detail is still important on the revival or on the tour or every stop of the tour. So it's all here. Um, I put a few other examples in here. Uh, there's a hokey focus chart uh, or hockey, I don't know what it is, but this is a, this is a from a book, uh, from Stephen Shelley's book. So another example, it's just in another way. This isn't using light, right? I'm not sure how he would do, how he probably actually lays out these focus charts, but just another example you can open and see how another designer might record focuses. Um, again, it's all the same information is there, it's just laid out differently. Um, and if you remember what Ryan said yesterday, listen, no one gets awards for their paperwork. Paperwork is all about making, uh, is making you do your job better. And that's what you do get awards for. So um, there is no right or wrong way to do focus charts, just it's wrong if you don't have the information recorded down. Um, doing talks on Hamilton, but you can, there's a conventional focus charts um, document in here you can open that they've made for the ETC stuff. And you can go through and actually they use Vectorworks to make um, it. Actually, Ryan said yesterday they do use Lightrite, but they also do these like system cheat sheets, which are really handy. It has the group information and it has the individual channel pictures all laid out. So one page will be one group. So if you look at that very first page of actual pictures, you can see this is the R132 temp down um, system. System being uh, just a, a, a large group of lights that are all targeting the stage, trying to do the same, same sort of gesture, same idea. So here you've got all these different channels that are, that are creating a down temp, a down global wash of the whole stage of Hamilton. And you can see how it breaks down bit by bit. And you can see how they broke it down into groups and all of that. So this is a really quick, easy way to check focuses um, and something that they would have spent a lot of time making. I was think um, there's one other thing in here I want to show you. Oh yeah, in the, in the same Hamilton folder, there is a, what they call a cone layout. This is exactly what I was talking to you about in terms of a cover sheet. And you can see uh, where they've actually drawn in, where their focus tapes are, where the zero zero is. Again, their zero is the back of the proscenium and the center line. They've actually got a photograph in the upper right hand corner of, of where those tapes are and what it looks like. And they call it a cone layout because they actually put little traffic cones on stage, something that lots of people do to show um, to show four, uh, eight and 12 across the front of the stage and markers up to the front. That's so when you're taking photographs of all this stuff, it's really easy to see in the photo. Now, not everyone has traffic cones and I'll give you a little trick, something I do when, I, when, I'm, when I'm not on a big musical, but say I'm in some random part of the UK and I've forgotten it. You just run to the front bar and maybe they'll have some red plastic cups or they'll have, I've even done it with um, clear uh, pint glasses or anything like that. You can use chairs, maybe there's fun props in the show you can put out, but just something that you can put in your photograph so that it's kind of easier to see like you know, every four feet, um, there's like a reference marker. That's all it really is. Um, Mike stands work, you know, anything like that just to help people see in a photograph. Um, where it is, is all your job is to make it as easy as it is to see where these focuses are. Um, guys, turn your camera on, ask me some questions now um, before we before we move on. Um, I'll read some of these questions. Maybe there's stuff here. 
um, uh, by Sarah. Tim, could you go over lands at part again, please? Yes, Camilla. So, so if you imagine this is the deck and you've got a piece of like a side light coming in from the angle, um, you, there's a cone of light, right? And that's what it would look like in a section. The bottom bit of light would be here. The top bit of light would shoot further and go over there. Lands at is describing where the bottom bit of that light hits the deck, um, which is really important because you want, say you're doing a side light system of ladders or dance or something like that. You want all of those lands at to hit the deck at the same point going upstage. Otherwise it looks really messy on the show deck. And for me as a focuser, I can actually focus that really quickly if I just go, right, put the bottom of the beam at my feet. So if I put lands at four left, I just walk over to four left and say to the guy on the ladder, right, put the barrel all the way out and lands at four left, uh, sorry, and, and point it at my heels because I'm standing at four left. That might not be the hot spot of the light, but it's actually really, it's so fast to focus the show if you can talk to them in, in those sort of terms. Um, so that's lands at. Uh, in White Christmas, asked Sydney, is there a reason you're running the lens out of a source forge rather than using a sheet of frost? So this is a Ken Billington thing. It's a very good question. Ken Billington thing. Um, it is a, so you, to focus the light with frost in it takes longer because someone has to take the frost out, they've got to adjust the barrel, focus the light, then put the frost in, then do the shutter cuts. On a show this big, uh, what a lot of people do is they just say, like, run the barrel all the way out. And what that does, it does two things. It saves you time in the focus. Uh, it also just makes the beam of light a little bit smaller and a little bit brighter. And Ken likes it, Ken likes it bright, he likes it bright. So it just gets you that little bit of extra brightness in a light and it saves you a bit of time. Um, listen, if it's a touring production and everything's touring in purpose-built towers, you, know, you don't need to worry about that because if as soon as, in theory, as soon as you lock off the barrel, it's locked off forever. So, so maybe they will do frost and, and stuff like that. Um, hey, Tamika, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Good morning. Um, my question is that I've worked in an environment where we've used Lightrite and we've uploaded photos for every single channel. Um, is that not the same with commercial? Do you want to do most of it on MLA um, with your photos and then kind of keep Lightrite blank? That's a really good question. And, and it was something I meant to say that I haven't done already. Um, so yeah, so and Annie Voller will talk to us about this tomorrow and in, we're on Friday when we talk about moving lights. But like photos are really good. Photos are great, always take photos. However, a photo doesn't quite tell you everything you need to know. There is always detail that, that you can put in focus charts that will, um, that, will, that will save you. And I'll tell you where it'll save you. It'll save you in doing a relight. So a photo tells you exactly what that light was doing, but a focus chart can tell you the intent of that light. So if, um, so like, you know, if, if I know, if I know I'm stood in the middle of bay one, let's say that's upstage by four, if I'm stood in the middle of bay one and I need to have the top cutter, shutter cut that light be uh, head high plus two. Um, and I write that down, but say the photograph shows the light hitting uh, the, the bottom of a wall of stage, right? So you re you replicate that when the show moves, because of course your front light moves every different venue you go to, right? So let's say you so you update that, but but the front light is much lower. The position, the actual physical position that that front light is much lower, and you've not thought about it lighting the person. You've only thought about replicating the photo. Now a person walks out in the middle of bay one at plus four and the beam of light is actually <laughs> below their head and then you've not lit them. So you've you've lost the intention of that light um, yeah. because you're just looking at photograph. So that my advice would be always write down footmarks, always write down uh, the parameters of that light because that's how you talk about the intention of it. Um, which I think is really important, um, but also photographs are great too. But sometimes people just look at the photos and they don't read it and don't think about it. And that's when mistakes happen. That Thank answer you. your question. Uh, yeah, I think I've got like a little side question to that. I said, yeah, um, no, I, so I, did you put photos because uh, put photos in the light right as well as MLA? So if so, the description, there'll be, but you said there's a photo box much land is there not enough time for that just to have your reference photos in mla you can do both if that makes sense. Yeah, you can okay you can totally do both it like okay it's actually really about also what you what you could have in front of you when you're focusing the show so when you're walking around yeah. on stage and calling focuses to an electrician 
um, and you and you have things in two different places um, or, or it's separate, then that could also maybe cause you some problems. You might want to have one spot. Me, I, I use light rights for the conventionals and MLA for the moving lights. Um, I just as two separate documents because it's also you're never focusing both things at the same time. Yeah. Um, and and I think like people tend to use light right more because you can put in more detail for a conventional in a different kind of way. Um, again, did I answer your question or did I just? Yes, you did. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Sydney, we've talked about frost. Um, ben, I think I I may have missed it, but in the UK, do you still use feet? For focus charts, uh, yes, a good question, Ben. It's something I did talk about. Um, I, I would strongly suggest that people do use feet uh, for lots of reasons. One of them was the floorboards are still four by eight in the UK, so you have those additional reference points in the floor. Um, if you want to do a quick note and you don't have time to put out focus tapes, so you can easily work it out. Also, the thing about feet and dance numbers, the way you can help sell this to choreographers is. Is, is two feet is actually kind of the perfect width for, for people to stand in a line, right? Every person lines up, one's on center, one's on two left, four left, six left. But um, if it's meters, it'd have to be zero, 0 0.5, one, 1.5, um, which I've seen shows do, and it's not nothing wrong with that. It's just a little bit confusing to have decimal, <laughs> to, to involve decimals. Um, so use, using that knowledge, uh, you can kind of try to sell a choreographer to use feet. Um, and plus, if they've assisted or worked on big American musicals, then they're really used to, to working in feet, which a lot of choreographers do. Um, yes, thank you, Noah. That is Stephen Shelley's thing we looked at, Practical Advice Stage Lighting, uh, one of my favorite books on lighting. If anyone um, doesn't have it, I think you should. Good morning, Amy. Just wondering where in the process you would do this slash find time to mark up the stage. That is a great question, something I didn't cover. So um, the best time to do this is when the designer or the associate, whoever is focusing the show, when they focus the show, what you do as an assistant is kind of run around, light right, you'll, you'll have your light right set up weeks before this, so you can print out blank focus charts. And then what I do is you run around after Ken and you just fill out the focus charts exactly what he's doing, when he's doing it, where he's doing it, um, either in a binder or my tip would be um, staple. So print, print out all, the whole packet of focus charts, but staple them together in little mini documents based on position. So I'll know right before lunch, we're gonna do first, second and third electric. Uh, maybe someone will still be in the catwalk. So I'll just walk around with those four little stapled together documents. And that's when you fill it out. And then when you've got breaks in tech or when people are doing work call on stage, you can start to enter all that information into Lightright. But, but the reason why you wanna to try to get on it as soon as possible, if there is the time, and sometimes you, you'll be in a situation where they're just, it's too chaotic or you can't even follow the designer around because you're focusing on another position or what, whatever sort of nonsense is going on. Um, the reason why you wanna get all this recorded as quick as you can is, so many times things move and change uh, when you're putting a big show in. Sometimes people have to braille a whole electric and change something to allow pieces of scenery to fly in and out. And that could be after you focus the show or a ladder has to be pulled off stage or raised because we got the calculations wrong because scenery has to pass underneath it. There's a number of reasons why, but uh, if you have all that recorded, then the designer doesn't have to be involved in refocusing that position. And I'll tell you, they absolutely don't want to be involved in refocusing that position. That'll be something that you'll do as the assistant before they get in in the morning. Um, so you're just, again, you're solving problems for them. And it's that simple. Also say a, a lamp is blown, things like that. You have to be there to refocus the light with the electrician because they had to move it to change the bubble. So the, all that stuff is good. It's good to have it written down as quick as possible. Um, hey, good morning, Nina. Good morning. Uh, so I wanted to ask in the American regional theater or in really off Broadway where you might not have an assistant or there's no time within the schedule, even while doing focusing, how would you suggest doing focus charts or documenting, um, those sorts of things, even if like you're the only one in the room yeah, who's there? Of course. I've sometimes tried to scribble it down myself. Um, or I'll scribble it down a little bit later because I'll, I'll try to remember what I'm doing, or I'll just, I'll usually focus from an instrument schedule. Um, 
and I'll call the focus through that, but I can write down the lens at, and I can write down, I can scribble the footmarks and the margins there and add that later. Or um, having this discussion with the general manager or the production manager and your electrician to say, listen, we're, we're gonna get to the fifth preview and not make any changes and the show opens a day or two later, I need, I need morning calls to do all of this, to do the morning light documentation, to do all that stuff. So it's about negotiating then that time later. And if there isn't that time in the previews, if there's only five previews and you know it's gonna be crazy in hell, then you just make sure that there's still crew called to do it, maybe after the opening to document it, um, would be my suggestion. Thank you. That, that answers your question. Yeah, well, it's also thinking about, you know, I've worked on productions as an electrician or doing, being the person who's focusing and seeing like they don't have focus tape and I haven't seen focus tape in non-commercial or in in more off off Broadway situations. So yeah. thinking about that kind of situation. Again, it, it, again like I, it totally depends, you know, it, you're totally right, it depends on scale. Um, the, the focus tapes that I was describing to you, you can get in London at Arthur Vale at the, at the yachting shop, uh, it's a pound a meter. So it really isn't that expensive to buy if you want to do that and bill it to the show. Or like I said too, um, just knowing that this stuff is important might mean that you might just get your iPhone out. And if you're doing a show that has 48 lights or hundred lights, you know, just get your iPhone out and just take quick photos, have someone bring up channel by channel and just take the photos. And at least that is something that you can leave behind. You might not be all the detail, um, and listen, if it is off, off Broadway or Fringe, chances are if it's going to move somewhere, it's going to probably upscale a little bit anyway. But at least you've been able to just take photos for your electrician. You can just label each photo, like the, like the actual name of the photo, the channel it is in the show. Uh, it takes you to it's like 48 seconds for 48 lights, you know, to take a photo of each light. So um, that, that's just a way maybe um, to do it, to still kind of cover your, cover your ass. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but do it in a time and with the budget you've got for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Um, this may be, uh, Adam asks, this, um, this may be a personal preference or outline info on the cover sheet, but I just, but just out of curiosity on the light rate paperwork when focusing and documenting Silight, how do you treat the cuts? Uh, yeah, good question. So it has upstage, downstage, uh, top, bottom, left and right, and it has six columns when you really only need four, because you're right, the side light you describe differently. Side, right, side light, you would probably describe uh, as upstage or downstage and top and bottom, when top and bottom might also be left or right. Um, I would use top and bottom because that's a lot easier. But again, light right, just it, it gives you those options so you can fill out whatever field that you, which, which has the language that you want to use to talk to the guy uh, up the ladder. But um, I would definitely inside that I'd use lands at top, bottom, upstage, downstage, um, for sure. Um, <clears throat> standing at the back of the unit, upstage. Great, yes, that's exactly what you're saying. Uh, Austin, does anyone have a link to focus tapes where I can buy? I can't find anything. There isn't really, like, I don't think anyone sells them as focus tapes. Like I said, it's like seat belt material. Um, I buy it at a yachting shop in London called Arthur Bale, which is in Covent Garden, Seven Dials. Um, again, it's like some of you probably get at a hardware store. Uh, I don't know what you call it in America, but, um, but I just walk into the auto shop and I was like, have you got seatbelt material? Um, and they, and maybe that's not what it's called. <laughs> Someone will correct me, but, uh, that, that usually gets you where you need to go. Um, hardware stores could help you, um, things like that. Um, seatbelt, oh, there you go. Michael got it. Uh, at the company I work for, says Willie, ask William, um, it's non-union regional, the ME, master electrician, or assistant master electrician will come in and do it quickly after opening. Great, thanks for Um Brad, I think I missed this, but did you say the convention, the convention is to focus the lamp center to your feet when standing on the mark? Yeah, so the foot mark is the hot spot of the light. Where you stand there, where are you? Are you as a human being, as a body, where are you centered in that light? And hopefully the hot spot is generally in this direction um because you want the, the brightest beam of light to be in the, in the center of that focused thing of the um of your system um uh, da, 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 ed ed is just helping out um, great william's got the info 
Uh, okay, it's 1045. Any more questions here about anything to do with that? No? Is there anything else in my Dropbox? So listen, a um, little preamble for tomorrow. You're going to hear Andy Voller talk to you about MLA and how we document moving lights. So today was all about this little blur, this little session was about conventional stuff. So um, I just dumped in your focus charts thing, a, a Chicago ML focuses folder. And um, I didn't put them all in there because we don't want anyone to copy of Chicago, but there's a few examples of what one of these focus charts might look like that Andy will can print out on his MLA software that he's made that he'll tell you about tomorrow. But it's again, the same example. If you go to the second document, uh, preset 102, uh, so actually, it was a really fun day, actually, there was no one else to really help us do this. So Ken and I did it on our set, on our own. You can see Ken Billington on stage there, me at the desk with the camera and on the, on the console, bringing up the fixtures. Um, so Ken would have been on stage with a radio and you can see there's a preset notes section. And Ken would have said that, that the light is focused at 12 left at plus two. Um, and he'll know that because you can look at the stage, you can see um, there's a little focus tape running up the center of the stage. And we found some traffic cones and you can see I've also put little plastic cups at the other markers on the front of the stage. So, so it's really easy to look at this photo and count where, uh, where those numbers are to see where 12 left is. And it lands at three feet up stage. Um, we also just for fun, we left the gel bar goes on a little bit so there's a little bit of a grid and a little bit of a reference there in case anyone wants that. It's also just good to just note and say this now, like when you are taking photos, it, it like to have a whole dark stage is probably not the thing to do. Um, so the work lights are still on a little bit here. Uh, you want to be able to have, you, you want people to be able to reference other geography in the photo. So don't have, if it's all dark and you're only looking at the light that's on stage, it's really not helpful to anybody. Um, so you can see in this photo in preset 102, it's also cha it's channel 207, a Mac quantum. Um, there's some other notes there. Unfortunately, it printed out very nicely, but we can talk to Andy about how to fix that tomorrow. Um, the fixture type is crossed over into the notes section, but you can see that the, of the bit you can read, it says lands at three feet, which means that three feet up from the back of the proscenium is where that light lands at. It, start, it hits the deck. And then six feet is the iris. Chicago is a really specific show. We actually go around the tape measure and we document it. Well, it's already been documented. When I'm recreating it, um, I'll be on stage with a, with a radio and then the programmer will be setting the iris size of a light before we get the cast on stage. I'll get my tape measure out and we'll, we'll just know that that is a three foot or four foot iris. Um, so there's 10 examples of focus charts from Chicago in there uh, that you can have a quick little look at. Uh, and you can see Ken on stage and he's just shouting out, this is, this is, we're, we're now in um, the, one of the final previews. I think I, I, my contract finished, but I came back for a day for us so us we could document this uh, and do all these photos. So tech is long over, uh, preview adjustments is long over. And now we're just documenting everything that the show is so that electricians have all this paperwork um, to reference if they need to to, to update anything, um, and they will do, because some of these moving lights over the course of the run of the show will get swapped out, and they'll have to update all that information. Any quick questions about moving light stuff, knowing as well that tomorrow we're gonna spend two hours on this, and Andy's gonna talk to you about moving light assistant, the software that made those documents. Um, 